I'm Keelan McCarthy, a program specialist at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I'm working from home right now, practicing social distancing, but I made this video to demonstrate how we can explore nature from wherever we are. So today I'm going to be making a butterfly life cycle guide, which you could also make into a necklace if you have some yarn at home. So if you'd like to follow along and make this with me, you'll need some supplies. You'll need a paper plate divided into four for the four life stages. You'll need some yarn if you're going to make that necklace, some leaf cutouts, which you could make yourself at home, um, and some glue. You could try a stick. I found that liquid glue actually worked much better and some little pieces of pasta to glue onto your leaves that represent each life stage of a butterfly. So I have a chini de pepe, rotini, some shells, and farfalle. But you don't have to use those exact ones. And if you don't have any pasta to use at home, you can just draw them on and it'll look just as good. So let's get to the butterflies. Butterflies are some of my favorite bugs. You may not know this, but butterflies actually are bugs. They're insects. We define an insect as having three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, six legs, which you can't really see on this model very well, and two antennae. And butterflies have all of those, but they don't always look just like this, do they? They go through a lot of changes before they become the adult butterflies that we recognize. And in fact, butterflies go through something called complete metamorphosis, which means they change completely from the time they hatch out of their eggs until they reach their adult form. And these are the life stages of a butterfly's complete metamorphosis. They go from an egg, itty, itty, bitty egg, to a caterpillar, to a chrysalis, and then they hatch out of that chrysalis an adult butterfly. So for so butterfly eggs, I have a chini de pepe, which is pasta that is teeny tiny little dots. You could also use orzo or rice, or even just make little dots on your leaf to represent the eggs. What I like about this pasta is it actually looks just like butterfly eggs. Real butterfly eggs are round. They are teeny tiny, like the head of a pin, and they are off white or yellow in color. So when you are searching for butterfly eggs outside on your nature walks, you can look in the middle, that like right down the center of a leaf or on the underside of a leaf for these teeny tiny little dots that look like that. So I'm gonna set that off to the side to dry. Um, these insects are in their eggs for about a week or so, and then they hatch into caterpillars. And for caterpillars, I have a rotini. The reason we use a rotini is because it has little curly cues that look like segments, like the segments or parts, little parts of a caterpillar's body. A caterpillar is a caterpillar for about 10 to 14 days. And all it does for about two weeks is eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and also eat. Um, if you remember the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, that's pretty much what it's like. They are storing up energy so that they can form a chrysalis and become a full butterfly. So you heard me say before that insects only have six legs and you may be thinking, Caterpillars have a lot more than that. And caterpillars, in fact, have six legs way up front. If you can see way up front, those six legs. And then they have a bunch of little kind of, little kind of nubbins all the way back down that are called prolegs that serve the same function as legs, but they're not quite true legs. So this caterpillar is all full and ready to form a chrysalis. So for a chrysalis, which is also called a pupa. I'm using a little medium shell here. You could also use a macaroni or you could draw something that's kind of teardrop shaped because that's kind of the shape of a chrysalis. So uh, our caterpillar will crawl to the underside of a leaf. It'll hang upside down and it'll shed its outer exoskeleton, its outer skin in order to form that outer casing for that chrysalis. And what's really cool is what's happening inside that chrysalis. So inside that chrysalis, that butter, that caterpillar actually, 
is breaking down all of its body parts and kind of forming a jelly, it actually digests itself in order to form a whole new body. So all of that energy that it stored up from eating and eating and eating and eating for 10 to 14 days before this, it is putting all of that energy into becoming a brand new butterfly. So our chrysalis is gonna hang upside down for about a week or so, maybe even longer, depending on the type of butterfly. And then after some time, our butterfly will emerge. So for our butterfly, we have a little farfalle or a bow tie pasta because that bow tie looks like little wings that are coming out of its body. And we're gonna glue this to a leaf because when it emerges from that leaf, it'll hang out on that leaf for a little bit. When that butterfly first comes out of its chrysalis, its leaves are all wet and folded up. And it needs those wings to dry out before it can fly off and do its thing. So now that it is an adult butterfly, it can fly off, it can find a mate, and it can lay eggs of its own and start the whole cycle all over again. So now that we have all of our little parts, all of our little pieces here, we can glue them to our plate. And remember the order goes from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly or you can punch little holes in them right up near the stem or so and string them on your yarn. And one good trick to know if you're gonna do it this way is to put it on the string and then make a knot, then put the next one on the string and put another knot. That way they won't all kind of clump together when you're wearing it. So now that we have our super cool guide to the lives of butterflies, we can use this to go outside and make observations about our environment. So if you're able to get outside, you can look for butterflies in these different life stages. You can look for eggs, either down the middle or on the undersides of leaves. You can look for caterpillars, usually in big leafy plants, eating and eating and eating. You can look for chrysalis hanging from the underside of leaves or branches and you can look for butterflies. And here in Colorado, we have lots of butterflies. And I've pulled up some pictures of some of the most common butterflies you'll see this summer in Colorado. So we have Western Tiger Swallowtails. They are big and yellow and black, really beautiful. We have Cabbage Whites, which are small and white or off-white with little black tips on their wings. We have Monarch Butterflies, which are big and orange and black and white. And these ones you will definitely see if you live near milkweed. Milkweed is what's called the host plant of but monarch butterflies, which means they'll only lay their eggs on milkweed and their caterpillars will only eat milkweed. The reason they do this is milkweed is toxic to birds. So by eating all of this milkweed, they make themselves take taste super gross to birds. So birds won't eat them. How cool is that? And finally, we have painted ladies. These are my favorite. They look a little bit like monarchs or orange and black and white, but they're more brown and they're smaller than monarchs. And we see a huge migration of these at the end of summer and beginning of fall. So if you have made this project and want to share it with us, please do use the hashtag DMNS Science Party, or you can tweet it directly to us at Denver Museum NS. Stay curious.